Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Digital Wilds. I'm Robin, and this is Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Uh, well, we are on the moon, as you can see. There's microgravity, and uh, apparently an atmosphere, even though that's not there in real life. But we'll ignore that for now, because we are on our way to sort out the x naught base, and uh, hopefully rescue our beloved Princess Peach. Now, the moon is occupied by moon clefts, who I imagine we're going to encounter some of here. Yep. They are fairly tough. I don't know if we've encountered them before in our first run through the Pit of 100 Trials, but it doesn't look like it, because... Uh, oh no, we got an HP bar, so clearly we have, and we will have to... Um, yep, deal with them in the normal fashion. Hopefully our uh, attacks are now powerful enough to get through some of their armour. Um, I think they are particularly vulnerable to explosions, so um, a bobbery attack should not go amiss. And just like most clefts, they are very easy to super guard, so nice and easy to take care of. You'll see we are closing on level 22, at which point uh, we should be able to get some nice badge work going on. I've been uh, planning this because um, as of tonight, as I'm recording this, probably be last week by the time this video goes up, I'm planning on doing a bit of a live stream through the Pit of 100 Trials to finish it off before we head into Chapter 8 and finish off the game. Okay, happily, uh, these guys are fairly easy to take care of and... Uh Oh, a vault stream. Definitely don't need that. I have far too much electrification going on in uh, my battles already. Mrs. Mao's offers some good solutions to taking them out, because of course she has uh, very high uh, ability to penetrate defences. There we go. Only five attack, but uh, you know, that's better than two if you uh, jump on it while it's got uh, four defence going on. And finishing off with the super guard always feels like the final humiliation, doesn't it? Okay, so I've gone around the uh, little map here and cleared out most of the moon clefts, which means we're on a total of 94 XP, which means hopefully I will be able to level up on the occasion of the next battle. Um, if I just break my way through all these rocks, we might find some goodies that are not stopwatches. I've found two so far and I really don't want them. Um, and yeah, then it'll be, uh, I guess, time to head over to the base and see whether we can find our way in. The moon movement, by the way, is extremely annoying. Um, it's very slow and floaty, and I get the idea, but also, like, you didn't need to turn the movement down um, so slow. There is a badge in this game called Slow Go, which makes Mario move around at this speed constantly, and I, I kind of don't get why it's there than a novelty. It's, it doesn't cost any badge points, so it's like, uh, it's one of those things like the Attack Effects badges where it's just a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, a bit of a one-off, but, um, yeah, I, it's the most annoying of the novelty badges, I think. Even some of the, uh, more annoying effects badges are less bad than that. Anyway, uh, looks like more clefts to clear out, so I'll, uh, let you know when I've done that, and hopefully we'll level up. There we go, that's an extra 6 XP, which takes us up to, I think, level 22, which will mean more badge points for us. Uh, I think at some point before I do the Pit of 100 Trials run, I'm going to want to uh, level up to get another rank of HP, because having 20 would be quite useful, but it's not the most essential thing for now. 57 BP, we're at, the cap, by the way, is 99. Um, after that, you uh, don't get any more. Uh, that's fine, that's enough to equip an awful lot of badges. Let's see what we can equip now, just out of uh, interest. What does this attack effects badge do, actually? Okay, it gives a weird metal-on-metal metal sound to Mario's hammer. Okay. Not uh, particularly useful, I suppose. Okay, so now that battle's cleared out, let's uh, equip an actual badge that I might want to use. What have I got? Um, I feel like Heartfinder wouldn't go amiss for three badge points. Um, the ability to restore my health on the go is really important, uh, especially when I'm going to have limited item capacity down in the pit. Oh, that guy's got a... Uh, Stopwatch, want to take him out at the earliest possible opportunity, frankly. The little metallic ding on Mario's attacks from that badge is um, getting a little bit annoying, so I might turn it off after this battle. Another bloody stopwatch, but also loads of uh, hearts to find, so could be worse. Oh god, okay, so on this screen we've got some more enemies, and these ones are very difficult not to get snuck up on by... Because they're horrible yucks things that have a ranged attack. But I managed to do it on that occasion. I got the first strike hit, even though their vertical hitbox is really weird. But, uh, oh well. They don't seem to have any defense, so uh, that's something. Um, and I guess I can add them to my title log now. Uh, time for Goombella to make her first appearance in this episode. Uh, Mrs. Mouse has been very useful against the um, moon cleft, but, oh god, okay. I managed to accidentally use her attack, but, I mean, that's not a bad thing. We managed to take out the enemy, but... Uh, yeah, I do need to still get them in the tattle log. Okay, over to the next one. Lots of jumping is your way around their ranged attacks, frankly. Um, oh, we've got a cleft there. Okay, we'll have to take that one out first. Ah, 
happily there's one in this battle. Excellent. Alright, Clef 2 know a very easy super guard, so tattle on the Zedyux. HP 7, attack 4, defense 0. Nice and easy as long as you can take them out the first turn. Once they get their mini yucks up, it becomes more annoying. But Mario is dealing tons of damage now, so not a problem. Quick hammer below to sort that guy out, and we get our XP doubled by uh, our Malovely Curse, which is very nice. Malie, sorry, Curse. Uh, Malovely is the one who does the predictions. Now, what, what you really want to do... Now, what you really want to do is get lucky on a uh, melee roll when uh, you get when you're fighting an amazing Daisy and get your XP doubled from that, because uh, then you get like 88 XP a go. There we go. Managed to super guard that, which is pretty good. I thought these guys were quite hard to super guard originally, but uh, apparently not. Anyway, should be able to take these guys out with normal attacks. Don't know why I'm still bothering to collect the coins because uh, I am at maximum capacity. I pro what I probably should have done before I came onto the moon was. Uh, Gone and bought some gold bars from the shop and stored them because that's uh, generally your way of exceeding the the money cap. You lose a little bit in the conversion process, but um, it's generally um, the only way. You buy like a triple gold bar for 300 coins, you can then sell it for 250 or something. Power punch. Now that's useful. An item I actually could use for once, although I already, I already have one, but uh, still. Um, honey shroom, 5 HP and 5 FP. Not an item that's going to do me a huge amount of good. Okay, fine. I'll take a power punch instead. Um... Is there anything other than this enemy that is worthwhile on this in this area other than getting to the moon base? No, so we'll just take out this guy and then proceed forward. Oh, okay, apparently these Zedyucks can't be hit by um, Bobbery's explosions. That's a problem. Especially because we're now going to have to deal with these guys' mini friends. Actually, I think that's an addition to my... Um, Tattle log that I do need, so I might as well just take out the moon cleft now, and then uh, we can get uh, Gumbella to deal with that one. Yep, mini Zed Yucks. Uh, HP 2, defense 0. Yeah, they're dead easy. Unfortunately, it does spawn more of them as you go, so um, I'm now on 5 HP, which is not ideal. I don't know if I have Danger Mario badges equipped still, uh, but we can give it a try. Multi-bounce our way across. And that takes down the surrounding mini yuxes, and then Gimbella should be able to easily finish off the main unit. There we go, 44 XP, nearly halfway to level 23 now. And of course, with our new badge, get some hearts out of that. Um, oh, it might actually have been quite a good opportunity to use that honey shroom now, but uh, oh well. Um, I might as well clear out my inventory actually and just use like I've got a standard mushroom. I'll have that. There's no cooking ability up on the moon until I finish this chapter, so uh, yeah, the items I've got are um, just gonna have to see me through. Okay, blow up this rock. Find the pipe behind it. Um, no. There's no star piece hiding behind it on this occasion. Uh, I don't know what happens if you go to the left out of this pipe. Presumably you just hit an invisible wall. And there's the invisible wall. Okay. And without further ado, here we are in a pressurised atmosphere. Which apparently we didn't need before, but uh, yeah, this is it. They're still keeping up the pretense, by the way, with the little uh, question mark on the uh, location board. Um, I mean, this is the x naught base, basically. And uh, you can tell that by the x naught music and the motifs on the floors, which makes things quite easy. And the fact that we've seen this place before in uh, the Peach sections, of course. Aha, so some special Elite x noughts are coming to get us, and uh, given this is uh, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, it's not exactly a very difficult game, we're presumably going to stomp them straight into the ground. Still, always be tattling, and uh, the Elite x noughts can go in the log with everything else. HP 10, attack 5, defense 1. They're fairly easy, especially because I can now do, uh, to a defense 1 enemy, I can do 10 damage in one turn. Like so. And their attacks are no different from the uh, standard x Orts, really, other than they can jump high and attack the, uh, the back row. Okay, so there they go. 
And that's our introduction to the base, I guess. Um, there's a heal block here, which we will make liberal use of because uh, we have coins to spare. And uh, so Peach must be here, you'd have thought. Okay. So, nothing for it but to head in. This is a very puzzly dungeon, uh, you'll find. It takes quite a while, and it really is, uh, feels like you're sort of coming to the culmination of the game. Um, that uh, red sign means that the elevator is locked for now, but that uh, may not always be the case. Okay, and we've got our snaking paths across the electrified floors, uh, which we have to follow in order to not uh, get zapped. And that's easy enough for this room. It obviously gets harder as we go on. It's special x naught chests. The elevator key here... Um, a gives us access to the elevator and B turns off the electric floor so we can access this box and get the uh, super shroom within and upgrade on the standard mushroom we had before. So back to the elevator, pop the key in and we can now uh, head down or up. So where are we heading? I think it's only down actually, I think it's an underground base mainly. Sub level 1, yeah, might as well head down to the first floor first. Standard x naught here, nice and easy to take down. Honestly, I know it's realistic that these guys would be in the main x naught base, but they're so weak by this point. Like, we were fighting these guys in Chapter 2, and, uh, yeah, we're now a long way past that, so Goombella can take them out nice and easily. So, if we head off to the left, let's see what we find. Uh, aha! So, a couple of things in here. We got a, uh, a missing cog, and, uh, that seems to be related to this device here. A couple of badges. There's no other way to acquire those than to, uh, use the device in question, so... And we'll have to go and find that cog somewhere down the line. It's a bit of a mini quest for this uh, dungeon. Door here that we need an access code for, um, which I could Google because I think it's always the same, but I feel like it, uh, you know, for the sake of a let's play, you probably want to uh, do things properly. Uh, and that will obviously let us in that room there. Okay, nothing else to do on this floor, so let's head down to sub level two and see what they've got there. Aha, so we've got these scientist x -Norts. These guys are going to need to be taken down. Ah, now annoyingly, I've probably just killed him outright, and I didn't have him in my tattle log, so um, we'll need to find another one of those at some point. For now, though, start on the left and see what we can find. Ah, so it's another maze, and this time we've got a map on the wall, which is nice. Um, following it along is a little bit difficult, because it doesn't have a grid on it, but um, we'll do what we can. Pretty sure it's the same on one end as it is on the other, so there we go. That gives us the card key, and that will let us unlock some more stuff. Uh, what's in this box? Sleepy sheep. Useless. Do not want a sleepy sheep. Even if it was quite entertaining making it glitch out there. Okay, and in the second room, what have we got? Ah, it's the science lab, uh, where we uh, did the invisibility potion with Peach. Ooh, their potions do actually kind of hurt. I think they can inflict burn and poison as well, so you want to be a bit careful. Okay, well, we might as well tattle away. Uh, x naught PhD. Or Dr. x naught as he probably likes to be referred to. Okay, HP 9, attack 4, defense 0. Uh, they're not particularly dangerous, really, but... Uh, we should take out the one with the super stream, just in case he gets annoying. Ah, they can heal themselves and make themselves big as well, I think. And they have uh, very supporting moves to their allies, so. It is nice to see some excellent enemy variety, actually. For the first uh, few chapters of the game, you really only see the basic guys and uh, obviously Crump and Grodus. Right, so, so more health for us. Uh, can we drink any of the things in here? I'm kind of curious. I have some stuff to do, so I'm not coming into work tomorrow, and that's that. Wish my work was like that. Keep the workspace orderly. Yep, I'm not your mother. Notice of new seminar. Topic, galloping towards an era of risk-free potions. I actually, um, <laughs> I really like that because it, it captures the, the weird um, grammar of uh, scientific announcements. Uh, when leaving the lab, always do your all-point inspection in the loudest voice possible. <laughs> okay, well, nothing else to do in here, but a bit of uh, nice flavour text anyway. Okay, so what's over to the right? Oh, yuxes apparently. Next up, we'll go to this room on the right and uh, we'll find ourselves a quite interesting bit of uh, room here. Not least because it contains the teleporter. And happily, as you'll know from the music, uh, this is how we get back to Earth. Well, back to Rogueport, whatever planet Mario takes place on. 
Uh, and you may recognize this building as uh, being in the sewers under Roadport. So there we go. That's how they got to uh, got to Earth from the moon, and it's how we get back to the moon from Earth. So if you want to do any cooking or go to an inn or anything like that, you basically have to go back to the uh, back to the hub world. Now, pre presumably that will have um, doing that will have respawned all the enemies, which is a bit annoying. Um, you also see up there there's the gear we need to access the uh, access the claw machine back on the first sub level. But uh, you'll see up there there's a grate that we need to drop through. We can't get it from down here, so. Oh well, we'll get that later. And yep, as I thought, the yucks is back. Okay, what's in the next room along then? Uh, another external PhD and some test tubes full of little yuckses. That's quite sweet. People generally treat the moon level as fairly forgettable, and it kind of is, but it's also um, a lot of fun. There's a lot of good lore here around the x so It's it, I think it gets forgotten because um, they were an enemy that never really came back in any of the subsequent games. This was back when... Um, this was back when Paper Mario was still allowed to come up with new characters and concepts and stuff. Um, so, sadly, it has been somewhat forgotten. Yep, yeah, you see the little red ones, the little grey ones. There's uh, all God's Rich Tapestry. Now, you see a dangling open grate there. And what do you think that's for? That's for our Ultra Jump. So, head our way up here. Uh, I think there's some hidden goodies um, around the place. We'll want to drop through all these grates eventually, but first things first, I'm going to um, head all the way down here, see if there's anything at the end of the room. There typically is in these kinds of... Uh... Yep, there we go, star piece in the corner. And I believe it was the second grate we needed to drop down in order to uh, get the cog. Now we can Yoshi over that gap, I think, but I think the easiest way will be to coops it. Yoink. Okay, now we can operate the crane when we go back up there. So can we head in over to the right? Well, that elevator's locked. The next room um, is not locked, but I don't know why we would need the grate. No, you don't really need the grate. You just drop down. Yeah, okay, that's pointless then. Um, so what have we got here? A couple of notes. How do they activate the switch? Left, right, middle. Do not forget. Okay, the code is 014029. 014029. 014029. What does it say? 014029. Okay, so drop through this grate and see what happens. And what happens is actually rather good. Not only do you turn into little beautiful sprite versions of yourself, uh, I think it works if, yep, you can see all the little sprite versions of all the partners here, which somebody has lovingly rendered and animated. Um, I'm a particular fan of uh, Sprite Bobbery and of Sprite Goombella with her little uh, retro minus helmet. Um, sadly, you can't use their abilities while they're in that form. They didn't animate that far, but they've also um, managed to get Mario's outfit right. So if you're wearing the L badge, um, when you turn into 8-bit Mario, you also... Um, get the Luigi clothes, which is great. And it plays the classic music, it's wonderful. There's no real point to it, it's just an easter egg, but it's really nice. Okay, and with those guys down, we get a booze sheet. That's probably worth holding on to if we have any boring items we don't need. Um, courage shell, pff, never really use them. Um, okay, and with that guy down, we can head into the next room. So in here, of course, we've got Grotus's room. We also got a, uh, I guess, kind of a mini boss. I think this is an elite yucks. I don't know if we fought one yet, anyway. No, we haven't, because I haven't got a... Um... Oh. Okay, well, I've killed it outright and got another level out of it. That's nice, but also I fear that I might have been the only one in the game. Uh, so I may have to head back to Frankly's bin and see if he's got an entry for that lying around. Um, he's at least figuring in that respect. Anyway, three more BP for us. And uh, what can we equip with that? Annoyingly, I don't have a piercing strike badge, which would be perfect right now, because there's a lot of enemies coming up with um, very high uh, defense power, and it would be good to be able to pierce their defenses with somebody who isn't um, Mrs. Mouse. However, that seems to be beyond me right now. Um, I'm wondering if there's uh, benefit in equipping Pity Flower and saving FP, or whether it would be worth unequipping something else and going for Flower Saver for a flat 1 FP reduction. Yeah, I think hammer th getting rid of Hammer Throw, which I use very seldom, and equipping Flower Saver instead is probably the way to go. 
So that's a minus one FP uh, cost reduction on all our special attacks, which is nice. If we head back here, this is where we snuck as Peach, obviously, into Grodus's office with his uh, Japanese motto above the door, which I believe businesses over there like to have. Um, I think there's some good stuff to collect in here as well. Uh, so we've got the key card, obviously, um, which is nice. Uh, can't turn on the computer this time. I could have sworn there was something else in here, but uh, maybe not. No, Mrs. Mouse informs me there isn't. Oddly unguarded, Grodus's office, uh, which does at least give us a bit of environmental storytelling that he's not here. Anywho, we can insert... Uh, ah, okay, so we need another elevator key before we can get, head down further. There, I think there are two two more levels, uh, which we know of, obviously, because we've uh, gone through them as Peach. Back up to sub-level one, and we'll go do the crane game. Another bloody stopwatch. I don't want them. They don't work very well. Anyway, that enemy beaten up. We can fit ourselves the cog get everything moving um, and then what do we got here we've got three ah so it's left right middle right okay and now that's been activated uh, we can use the crane machine so moves as long as we hold down a um, so what we need to do is go left and then B over to the star piece. And there we go. Now obviously in real life these cranes are a bit of a fraud and they just uh, will go limp for most of the time that they actually grab anything so you can't actually get any prizes until you spend a certain amount of money, which is um, how those things work if you've ever wondered. Uh, anyway, get ourselves that star piece. Um, do it again, we'll pick up those badges. I'm not that bothered about the coins. Uh, I can do without having eight coins or however many it is. But these badges are quite useful. I think these are called Feeling Fine, and they uh, give you immunity from uh, poison at least, and possibly other status effects as well. Poison and dizziness, so not the most sort of damaging status effects, they don't immune you from like Confuse or Frozen, um, but uh, still quite handy to have all the same. I think they cost 4, F 4 BP to equip, which is quite expensive, um, but nonetheless worth it for the badge collection. So we'll go over and get the partner variant as well, and then we'll head further into the base. And here we go, we got an uh, access code to enter, and as we remember from earlier, it's 014029. There we go, so this room to the right opens, and what's in here? Aha! We remember this guy from uh, chapter one. It's time for another quiz. Who are you, huh? You came here to get the elevator key so you can access the computer room? Yeah, I thought so. Well then you're gonna have to beat me to get it. If you lose, your life is mine, you hear me? Mine. So what do you say? Ah, oh, let's challenge this chump. Yep, so time for another round of quizzing. Uh, this time with a metal swamp instead of a rock one. The 66th annual quirk quiz. If you get five correct answers to the following questions, then you win, win, win. But if you get three wrong answers, you're toast. So, question number one. Exactly what is hidden here? Um, it's an elevator key, isn't it? Okay, what's, sec what's question two? What's the name of the girl in Petalburg who's waiting patiently for Koops' return? Oh, God. Uh, oh, no, it's quite easy because of the other answers. Um, Petunie is obviously one of the punies. Uh, Marilyn is one of the, the, the magic sisters. Uh, Flavio is obviously the captain from uh, Chapter 5. And it's Koopy Goo. My process of elimination. Right, what's question three? Goomba, Lava Bubble, Buzzy Beetle and Boo. How many feet do they have in total? Uh, right, Goomba has two. Lava Bubble has zero, Boo has zero, Buzzy Beetle has four, so six. Question four. Where was the one, the only diamond star? Ooh. Right, Glitzville was a garnet star, I think it was yellow. Cortez's one was blue, so it wouldn't be the diamond star there. Hooktail's Belly and Poshly Sanctum were both, like, white. I'm gonna go Hooktail's belly! And I'm correct. Okay, only one more and I win. So what's question number five? The name of the very first champion at the Glitzville Arena. Uh, it was Pris Prince Mush, wasn't it? Yes, he was the uh, brother of the, the girl who uh, was uh, Grubber's secretary. Okay, and uh, this gets us our elevator key. 
So now we can access uh, floors three and four. So the second lift is on sub level two. Pop the new elevator key in. And might as well work our way down from left to right. Ah, so this time we got another electrified floor, but we have to follow the um, follow the snaking uh, safe spots along. I don't know if we can stray off them, or whether it just moves and we have to make sure we're on one of the the safe ones at any given time. I presume, given how slow it's going, that it's the the latter, and we can't just uh, speed our way across. Yes, as we saw from uh, Coops repeatedly getting repeatedly getting zapped here. It takes quite a while, but you do eventually get there, and now we can open this and get the card key, and I think that's the final one of the level. There might be a couple more. Still, uh, nice to have, and uh, is this item any good? HP drain? Nah, not really. I've got, um, I have healing moves if I need them. So what's on the right-hand side of here, other than enemies to smash? Okay, so we need some key cards in order to get through, um this gate, although it seems a bit pointless because I feel like by the time you um, get down here you'll have them all anyway, so you might as well just set a different kind of flag to let the player through. Okay, and here we are in the puzzly bits, um, which are basically the worst bit of this uh, this chapter, but uh, oh well, we're here now, might as well get it over with. Lots of daisies and punies in the crown, very foresty uh, sort of battle today. I do very much like the battle uh, backgrounds on this uh, Stage though, a lot of love put into them for what is ultimately a very small part of the game. Okay, so with that guy down, um, it's easy enough for us to sneak through here. And what are we doing? Can't get past that gate yet, so... Um, oh, uh, okay. Box here that needs hitting. That is easy enough to do, because we can chuck Bobbery over this fence. Or apparently we can't. Uh, maybe if we do it from closer. There we go. That starts up the machine. And now we still can't get under the gate, but we are being drawn inexorably forward by the conveyor belt. So um, use Vivian to pop under there. This is a kind of a ensemble test of all your um, partner abilities, basically. I thought there might be a star piece hidden back there, but that's too clever even for the game. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we're hopping on this uh, lift at the earliest opportunity. I kind of don't want Vivian out. She's not a very good partner, but uh, there we go. And yep, it's a platforming section. Quite an easy platforming section, to be honest. This is not a uh, not primarily a platformer, and the game kind of knows it. Oh, what happens if we drop down here to the left? Oh, we can't. There's an invisible wall. Okay, probably for the best. And this is an ultra shroom up there. If I wanted to go and get one, which I kind of do. Oh no, oh, I missed the lift. And now, because I missed the lift, I have to go all the way over and start again, which is incredibly frustrating. And it at least uh, gets me out of this pipe here so I can get further on in the stage, but unfortunately it's not a bit of the stage I want to be stuck in, really. Um, especially when I get first strikes like that. So that elevator key is what we're after. But to get hold of it, there's quite a lot of platforming yet to be done. So this time being very cautious about my... Uh, platforming abilities. I'm going to wait for this uh, very quick moving platform on the left to retract before I hop over to it. There we go. Now I can get the Ultra, ultra Shroom and uh, chuck out the Super Shroom it's going to replace because that does uh, only 20% as much healing. Now it should be easy enough to uh, make our way back. And hop over onto the Cogs here. Uh, and uh, yeah, managing these while you're trying to get onto the uh, Caution tape platforms is quite the task in itself. Right. So, timing this right is going to be fun. Got to get into that platform up there. Yep, yeah, there we are. Okay. Right, down the tall pipe, and this takes us into the upper level. So we're making some progress now. Um, there is a quick thing to do here, which is drop down onto this uh, lower swinging platform, and if we can hit the uh, 
So by hitting that block, we managed to expose this staircase, which is great, but it does also drop me back to the beginning of the uh, platforming stage, so I'll see you in a minute. Right, now that this staircase has been exposed, uh, we can use this paper plane panel for its intended purpose. Which is to fly across the levels like so, and grab ourselves the elevator key. Now this game loves its busy work, so it now makes you go through the uh, platforming rigmarole a third time. You could get it down to two if you did the paper plane first, I know that, but you know, I'm an idiot, so um, it's three for me. And now, we can pop the elevator key, the card key in here. And through we go. And I'm sure nothing but good things will happen in here. Now, I haven't been down to floor four of the, um, the moon base yet, which is a bit of a worry, because I think I uh, may have missed something. But, uh, oh well, we've managed to find Crump and his uh, Magnus von Grapple. So, um, yep, yeah, Magnus von Grapple 2.0, here it comes. You remember we originally fought this back in Chapter 2, and it's much the same battle now, it's just got a few new abilities. Okay, so, um, first port of call is to get Goombella out and get this thing tattled. The upgraded version of Magnus Von Grapple. HP 70, attack 6, defense 2. Okay, fair enough. Uh, easy enough to do. Um, they can... It can release its fists as sort of independent entities, which is not great. Um, where's the best place to start, we think? Uh, somebody's going to throw... Oh, it's a mushroom, which I don't need, but fine. Um, well, might as well start as we need to go on with a power bounce, just to start getting his HP down. Not bad, 12 HP off the bat. Okay, and here's the drill attack. This one's quite hard to dodge, as I recall. Um, we can normal guard it, but still, 5 HP a go is not nothing. Um, right, uh, multi bonk. Okay, same again. Um, Flower Saver costing us only 2 FP a go for the Power Bounce, which is very good value. There we go, down to 39 HP already. So what kind of bonus uh, features does this have? Okay, it's got uh, unleashed its fists as an um, independent entity, which is not great, but, you know, we can probably deal with it. Multi-Bounce will deal with that, I think. There we go. And now I think we've probably got a turn without it uh, attacking us. There we go, so only 27 XP left. And uh, yeah, a extra bonus uh, defense for us. Courtesy of the lovely Malie. Okay, what's it doing here? Oh, it's going to... Uh, do its audience machine gun thing. Bonus defense actually very useful here. It means I don't have to use any of my uh, life shrooms if I'm bad with the guarding. Okay, they literally do nothing to me. Thanks, Millie. Doesn't got his fits back either, so uh, another power bounce, I think. Right, down to 17 HP. If we're lucky, we should be able to get it down to 10. Ah, 11. Still nearly there. And has to spend a turn um, regenerating its fists, which I don't mind. Um, again, same again. Multi-bounce will take him down. Now, can we finish him off in one turn with uh, Gimbella? That's the objective. No, I don't need a star roulette. Those, that's the one I've got full. Still, get the audience full. Not a bad thing. Um, okay. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be Gimbella. Oh, don't have enough for another multi bonk. bonk. In which case, uh, yeah, Mrs. Mouse, she can do the armor piercing and uh, she'll get him down to two. Okay. That's actually quite a powerful attack. I, I, I am disappointed in you. Down you go. Okay, and that is the end of Lord Crump himself. That uh, explosion should probably hurt us, to be honest. Oh! Okay, yeah, he's been blasted off into space. Fine. We were apparently completely untouched by that explosion. And yeah, there we go. Uh, the seventh crystal star is ours. We finally have all of them. This one's just called the crystal star. Star power eight. Mario can use a special move supernova. I think that's the one that just you mash A and it does just large amounts of damage to everything on screen, which is a nice attack. But I think it costs a ridiculous amount of star power, like six or something. Okay, the last crystal star had been hidden in the Exnaut hideout on the moon. By the time Mario recovered it, Peach had already been taken away. Where could Peach be now? And what of the elusive Grotus? Perhaps he holds the key to the remaining puzzle. Mario finally has all seven crystal stars. Where will they lead him next? And what I think is our last Bowser interstitial, here he is in Poshley Heights. Where's this stupid Poshley Sanctum? A crystal star's there, right? So they say, your putridness, and lo and behold, there it is now, right behind you. About time something worked out for old Bowser. In we go. So who's here? Toodles the Toad. I say, I'd like to mount a large animal horn in my foyer to highlight my social status. Oh my goodness gracious, you have terribly fine horns, don't you, you great thing? Uh, that's disgusting. Get away from me, you psycho. You can't have my horns. Yeah, quite right. Can I go down this pipe as Bowser? No, I can't jump. What about the pasta saleswoman? Uh, nope. Oh, we got one of the penguins. Hello there, guy. Poshley Hikes is nice on a warm afternoon, eh? What's that? You're a great and evil king, are you? Really? You know, guy, I think you got maybe a little too much sun. <laughs> what does Bub think of Bowser? Wow, you're big, mister. What's your name? <laughs> Businessman of legend. I am Bowser, businessman of legend. Fear my accounting. Oh, businessman. Like business trips, bribes and brown noses, oh my. Wow, tough life, huh? So, mister, are you in charge of the coffee maker or what? So what does Sylvia and Bob Bob and Gold Bob have to say here? Oh, my heart trembles. The fountain's so elegant. This is art at its finest. Very observant as usual, my dear Gold Bob. Indeed. Surely this is an artist's art. Yes, dearest. One cannot measure it by worth. Measure its worth by coins. That is what makes art art. And yet the filthy rich always seek to define art with their ill-gotten coins. Yes, they seek to buy it. Yet how can one appreciate what the eye cannot perceive? Okay. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. You people scare me seriously. Yeah. Okay, let's pop into Poshley Sanctum and see what the uh, deal is here. It's locked, it won't budge. Huh. Okay. In we go. This is it, Haggy. This is finally it. At last, I've got my mitts on a crystal star. Yes! Impressive work, Lord Bowser. You're the absolute best star-getting guy. You there! I have you now, villains. You are common thieves, aren't you? My eyes never deceive. What are you implying? I'm no little thief. I'm... Cooper Coot. <laughs> I'm taking this. Mess with me and I'll bore you to death. I see. Unfortunately for you, that's a red herring. Yes, a fake. If you want it, it's yours. A fake? But look at this fancy display. The pedestal and everything. It's so posh. If it's a fake, then where's the real one, huh? If you must know, I gave the real one to Luigi. Oh! You have got to be kidding me. You mean to tell me that Luigi beat me here? Oh, those Mario brothers are the most annoying brothers of all time. How bothersome. The fact that we keep being outmaneuvered is disturbing. Where in the world could Mario and his brother be heading? Where? Lord Bowser! 
Ah, Paragoomba, what are you so worked up over? Hmm? I'm quite entertained that Pennington doesn't mind him sitting on his head. Now reporting, sir and ma'am. Mario has collected the seven crystal stars and is headed for the crystal, headed for the thousand year door. The thousand year door? What in the heck is that? The thousand year door? An unbelievably legendary treasure is behind that door. Then I'm going to go there too, immediately, and I'm going to ruin Mario. Will you now? Luigi, well done lad. Way to not fail, yet. Okay, so... Yep, yeah, much going on here, and uh, in the next episode we are going to head back to town, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's much else to do in Roadport, so we are just going to head into Chapter 8 and sort out what's going on here. So, uh, here we are back in the moon base, and uh, I think we can head down to Floor 4 and see uh, what's going on with uh, the rest of this place before we head back to the, uh, head back to the town. I'm pretty sure that now that Grodus is gone, now that uh, Crump is gone, there's no more uh, enemies in here. But I might be wrong, so I'll have to be a bit careful. Sub-level 4, then. What's down here? So, I recognise from this music and from the uh, decoration that this is, uh, yeah, Peach's room. This looks like the toilet that is the pipe from um, the Glitz Pit, but it doesn't function as one, even though it looks like one. Um, so, can't take a shower as Mario, sadly. And now, obviously, we know that if we head down to the right, we should find the remnants of tech. Where are we now? You are Mario, are you not? It is pleasant to meet you. I am the main computer of this fortress. I am tech. I must tell you something. That is why I brought you to this place. Princess Peach. I am so sorry. Most of my data was er er erased and my main power unit was shut down. Now running on backup power with only cached memory. Trying to stay operational. M Mario, you know that Peach is not here, do you not? Please save Peach. Please. Princess Peach is with Grodus in the Palace of Shadow. I had to tell you that. But backup power failing. Mario, use the teleporter room to get back to Rogueport. Teleporter room is on sub-level 2 of the fortress. I will release the room lock. Hang on, that room was already unlocked. We used it earlier. Maybe it was locked um, when we finished Chapter 7 so that we had to go down here and speak to Tech. Okay, before we met Peach, he knew nothing of love. That's um, quite uh, impressive, considering he doesn't have any human, you know, elements. So, yep, yeah, she's uh, she's gone from his memory. And um, sorry, Tech. Now the room's gone all red, which is quite uh, on the nose, I think. No music in here or anything. This is quite somber. And without further ado, back we go to Rogueport. Peach, goodbye. I think that's implied to be the base blowing up, but I'm pretty sure you can go back. Because there's, there's collectibles there that are like one time only, like uh, there would be one time only if you, if the base did blow up, like the um, star piece. Oh. Okay, maybe it is broken. I don't know if we can go back there post-game, maybe? Well, if it isn't Mario. Over here, son! Oh, okay, he's left his, uh, left his house. You brought the crystal star back from the moon with you, didn't you? Talk into my good ear. The x naught fortress is on the moon? Ah, yes. So Princess Peach was there too, I assume. She was, yes, but the x naught boss took her and went to the Thousand Year Door. Aha! Just a bit ago, I smelled some rank air and went to the Thousand Year Door. I saw a suspicious fellow in a cake go through the door with Princess Peach. Excuse me? Without the seventh crystal star, that door should never have opened. Believe me, I know, but I'm quite certain of it. I saw it with my own eyes. I have, ever, I have a very bad feeling about this. Very bad. Princess Peach is in danger. Time is short. We must go to the Thousand Year Door and rescue the princess. I'll run ahead and meet you there. Don't dawdle. You must come immediately. Okay. Well, that was odd. But, uh, oh well. Uh, we are where we are. So, um, 
yeah, for now, I'm going to leave things off here and head back up to the surface, just get uh, refueled and ready for the uh, Pit of 100 Trials before we go and sort out Chapter 8. So uh, thank you again for joining me. Um, just going to quickly uh, pop over to Dazzle and see if we've got enough star pieces to trade or something yet. We've got a happy heart, might as well add that to our uh, collection. And uh, we're nearly there on the star pieces now. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, thank you very, very much for listening. If you'd like to help me grow the channel, you can always subscribe, and I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash digitalwilds. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.